All right, good evening. Welcome back to JPC Special Talk, Chair Campbell. So this evening, day 17, in our chosen blended harmony of the Gospels, before we jump into our readings, we're going to ask the Lord in a quick prayer. In the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we're going to ask the Lord to shine to our hearts, O loving Master, the pure lives of divine knowledge, and open the eyes of your mind, that we may understand your teachings in Scripture. Help us to apply what we learn after having conquered civil desires. We may pursue a spiritual way of life, thinking doing all things that are pleasing to you. You, Christ, are God, you are light, you will get glory. The Father, Son, Holy Spirit, will now and forever in the sages. Amen. Oh, how love your laws, meditation, all day words, land to my feet, like to my path. Our Father who art in heavens, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, may will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory, the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, will now and forever in the sages. Amen. For it is writ, man shall not live by bread alone, but your word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Again, again, my mother and brothers and sisters of those who hear the word of God and do it. Lord Jesus Christ, and a God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, and a God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, and a God, have mercy on me, a sinner. The Lord is our shepherd. All right, good evening. Welcome back. So great is his faithfulness. Indeed, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Demanding a miracle. We'll start us out. Our first read. After dismissing the crowds, he got into the boat with his disciples and went to the region of Magadan, the district of Duluthama. The Pharisees and Sadducees approached and began to argue with him, demanding of him a sign from heaven to test him. He sighed deeply in his spirit and replied, When evening comes, you say it will be good weather because the sky is red. And in the morning today will be stormy because the sky is red and threatening. You know how to read the appearances of the sky, but you can't read the signs of the times. Why does this evil and adulterous generation demand a sign? Truly, I tell you, no sign will be given to this generation except the sign of Jonah. Then he left them, got back to the boat, and went to the other side. The disciples had forgotten to take bread and had only one loaf with them in the boat. Then he gave them strict orders. Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees and the leaven of Herod. They were discussing among themselves, we didn't bring any bread. Aware of this, he said, Why are you discussing the fact you have no bread? You have little faith. Don't you understand or comprehend yet? Do you, do you have hardened hearts? Do you have eyes and not see? Do you have ears and not hear? Do you not remember when I broke the five loaves and the five thousand? How many baskets full of leftovers did you collect? Twelve. They told him. When I broke the seven loaves of the four thousand, how many baskets full of pieces did you collect? Seven, they said. And he said to them, don't you understand yet? Why is it you don't understand that when I told you beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees, it wasn't about bread? Then they understood that he had not told them to beware of the leaven and the bread, but of teaching of the Pharisees and Sadducees. They came to Bethsaida. They brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and brought him out of the village, spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him. He asked him, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking. Again, Jesus placed his hands on his eyes. The man looked intently in his sight and was restored and saw everything clearly. Then he sent him home, saying, Don't even go into the village. And the father Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the, so the Pharisees were looking what? They wanted a sign from heaven. What that means is like a spectacular display of what? God's power, right? The time of the Messiah among the Jews was expected to be accompanied by signs. But these hypocrites had not recognized the sign already had been performed because their hearts were what? Hardened. Right? And they ignored the works happening all around them. Jesus mentions adulterous generation. Jesus refused to prove himself in a spectacular way. For a sign is never given to those whose motive what is to test God. The sign, the prophet Jonah, is veiled prediction of Christ's death and resurrection. The ultimate sign that Jesus is truly the Christ. The leaven of the Pharisees is their doctrine, their hypocrisy. The reason disciples are plainly slow to understand is that they have, what, little faith. 
They would not fully grasp Christ's teaching until Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit was given. As we finished up, it said, They came to Bethsaida. They brought a blind man to him and begged him to touch him. He took the man by the hand and brought him out of the village, spitting on his eyes and laying his hands on him. He asked him, Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking. Again, Jesus placed his hand, hands on the man's eyes. The man looked intently, and his sight was restored. And he saw everything clearly. And he said to him, Say nothing. Don't even go to the village. So Jesus takes the man outside the village to heal him because of the crowds and the mockery. He didn't want people to mock the blind man because it would further condemn them more, if that makes sense. So Jesus was protecting the other people, the mockers, for further condemnation, right? And Jesus also tells them not to go back to the village, which is basically making a reference not to go back to our sins, right? It means those who are fit for heaven don't look back, right? And that's what it's saying, right? So now he needs to become fit for heaven and move forward. Do not turn back to the way he came. It took a minute for him to be healed because it was kind of his lack of faith. So it took a little longer to heal because it had to do with his faith. That makes sense. All right, so next reading, Peter's great confession. Name the Father... Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus came to the region in the villages of Caesarea, Philipp Philippi. On the road, he was praying in private. The disciples were with him, and he asked the disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They reply, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah still, others Jeremiah, or one of the ancient prophets who has come back. But you, he asked them, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus responded, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth, you will bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth, you will have loosed in heaven. Then he strictly warned and instructed the disciples to tell no one that he was the Messiah. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Who do you say I am? It's probably one of the greatest questions a per it's probably one of the greatest question a person could ever face. For it is the question that defines Christianity. Peter's correct answer to this question prevents the Christian faith from being seen as merely what an another physiological system or a path to what spirituality for it names Jesus as what the one and only what son of the living God this position excludes all compromise with other religious systems Peter's understanding cannot be achieved by human reasoning but only by divine revelation through the faith right you can also see 1st Corinthians chapter 12 verse 3 Christ means what anointed one and is equivalent to the Hebrew name Hebrew title Messiah note that Christ first draws out Erroneous opinions about himself. He does, not, he does this to identify what these incorrect ideas as a person is better prepared to avoid false teachings when they are clearly identified. Peter. Right, so the name Peter, rock, is a play on words for rock. And both Aramaic and Greek, right? Petros and Petra, right? This rock refers not to Peter per se, right? So it's not... It's not referring to Peter per se. Peter had strong faith. We know that, right? But the faith of his confession, right? This is important. St. John Chrysostom, right? The true rock is Christ himself, right? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. And the church is built on the faithful confession of Christ. So that's what the church is built on, right? A faithful confession of Christ, right? So the gates of Hades, powers of death, and the Old Testament suggests a fortified city. Hmm. Genesis chapter 22, verse 17, and Genesis chapter 24, verse 60, and Isaiah chapter 14, verse 31, make references uh, suggesting a fortified city. By shattering his gates, Christ opens a strong hold of death to set free the souls of the righteous. So also the church shall not be stopped in her pro proclamation, what a salvation. The term church is mentioned only twice in all the Gospels. 
here and here and and also in Matthew chapter 18 verse 17. So some of these readings came out of Matthew chapter 16, right? So it'll be verse 18. The church is the true Israel and what the body of Christ. Her citizenship, her citizenship is what? It's heavenly, right? So the keys of the kingdom, right? So what Jesus said, I'll give you what the keys of the kingdom. So that's referring to what? Special authority, right? That will be given to both Peter and what the other apostles. It wasn't just to Peter. No, it was to all of them. Listen attentively, right? After the resurrection, Peter was Peter was not a leader over the others, but among Peter was not a leader over the others, but among them. The truth was confirmed at the Council of Jerusalem. Acts 15. If you follow my morning reads, we've talked about that. Where the apostles and the priests met as what? Equals. And where and where Peter advised, but James presided. Pow claims in later centuries must not be confused in New Testament witnesses recording Peter, nor should the role of Peter be di diminished in opposition to these claims. Binding and losing is reference what primarily to the authority, what? To absolve sin. St. John Chrysostom can also reference John chapter 20, verse 23, but also includes all the teaching, sacramental, and administrative authority of the apostles. This, this authority was in turn transmitted to the bishops of the church and continues in effect to this day. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus prophesizes his death and resurrection in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. From then on, Jesus began to point out to his disciples that it was necessary for him to go to Jerusalem and be rejected and suffer many things for the elders, chief priests, and scribes, be killed and raised on the third day. He spoke openly about this. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Oh no, Lord, this will never happen to you. Jesus turned to rebuke Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You are hindrance of me because you're not thinking about God's concerns, but human concerns. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So after Peter's confess confession, Jesus reveals the true nature what, of his Messiahship. The mystery of his what, passion. Right? So it was expected that the Messiah would what, reign forever. Right? Yeah, well, that, was, that was it. So the idea that Christ would die was perplexing, what, even to Peter. And remained scandalous to the Jews even after the resurrection. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 23. Peter unwittingly speaks for Satan as the devil did not want Christ to what, fulfill his mission and save mankind through what, suffering and death. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Beautiful, beautiful. Next reading, take up your cross. Calling the crowd along with disciples, he said to them, If anyone wants to follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me and the gospel will save it. For what, for what does it benefit someone to gain the whole world and yet lose his life? What can anyone give in exchange for his life? Whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will also be ashamed of him when he comes in his glory and the glory of his Father with his holy angels. And then... He will reward each according to what he has done. Then he said to them, Truly I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The power. In the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. The cross. So the cross was... Considered a dreaded in instrument, right? So a dreaded instrument of Roman punishment. It was also a symbol of suffering by Christian and imitation of Christ, right? So we practice what? Self-denial for the sake of for the sake of love. So we practice self-denial for the sake of the love of God and the gospel. Accepting the suffering, what it is not a punishment, nor is it an end in itself, but a means to overcome the fallen world. For the sake of the kingdom and to crucify the flesh with his passions and end, end desires. Galatians chapter 5, 
verse 24. The central paradox of Christian living is that in grasping for temporal things, we lose and we lose the eternal. But in sacrificing everything in this world, we gain eternal riches that are un unimaginable. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. What will, a man, what will a man gain? What will a man give in exchange for his soul? This question emphasizes the utter foolishness of accumulating worldly wealth and power. For none of this can be redeemed. None of this can redeem a man's fallen soul, nor benefit a person what in the life to come. It's true. To take up the cross means to bear it all with Christ. It means you must deny yourself, right? It's a relationship. It's not about religion. You can't be one foot in and one foot out. No. Right? That's what it's saying. All right. So the trans the transfiguration of Jesus. About six days after this conversation, he took along Peter, John, and James and went up on the high mountains, on the high mountain to pray and be alone. As he was praying, he was he was transfigured in front of them. The appearance of his face changed and shone like the sun. His clothes became dazzling as white, as light, extremely white, as no lawn or earth could whiten them. Suddenly, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter then, Peter and those with him were in a deep sleep. And when they came fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men who were, who were standing with him. As the two were departing from him, Peter said to Jesus, Lord, is it good for us to be here? If, if you want, I will set up three shelters here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, because he did not know what to say since they were terrified. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud covered them, and a voice the cloud said, This is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down or terrified. Jesus came up and touched them and said, Get up, don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus alone. As they were coming down the mountains, Jesus commanded them, Don't tell anyone about the vision until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. They kept this word to themselves and at, at that time told no one what they had seen, questioning what rising from the dead meant. So the disciples asked him, Why then do the scribes say that Elijah come first? Elijah is coming and will restore everything, he replied. But I tell you, Elijah has already come. And they didn't recognize him. On the contrary, they did whatever they pleased. They did, they did whatever they pleased to him. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer at, at their hands. Then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. And the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the transfiguration. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun. His clothes became as white as light. Matthew chapter 17, verse 2. The transfiguration is the theophany, a manifestation of God, especially of the divinity of Christ through a display of his uncreated divine injury. Therefore, the Orthodox Church celebrates the transfiguration of the Lord as a major feast day. Several elements of the transfiguration show that Christ is the Messiah and God. Because God is light. The bright cloud and the shining of Jesus' face like the sun and the whiteness of his garment all demonstrate that Jesus is God. Right? The Father bears witness from heaven concerning his Son. The transfiguration not only proclaims Christ's divine sonship but foreshadows his future glory when he, ha when he as the Messiah will usher the long way to kingdom. Moses represents the law and all those who have died. Elijah represents the prophets, and since he did not experience death, all those who are alive in Christ, their presence shows that law, the law and the prophets and the living and the dead will all bear witness to Jesus as the Messiah and the fulfillment of the, of the whole Old Testament. Finally, the Holy Trinity is manifest here, for Christ is transfigured. The Father speaks from heaven, testifying to Jesus' divine sonship, and the Spirit is present in the form of dazzling light surrounding Christ's person, over, overshadowing what the whole mountain. <clears throat> healing a demonized boy named the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
The next day when they came down from the mountain, they came disciples. There was a large crowd around them, his scribes disputing with him. When the whole crowd saw him, they were amazed and ran to greet him. He asked him, what are you arguing with him about? Just then a man from the crowd approached and knelt down before him and cried out, Lord, have mercy on, on my son because he is my only child. He has seizures, suffers terribly. He has a spirit that makes him unable to speak. Whenever, whenever it seizes him, suddenly he shrieks and throws himself down in convulsions, severely bruising him. And he foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth, and becomes rigid. He often falls into the fire and often into the water. He scarcely overleaves him. I begged your disciples to drive it out, but they could not heal him. And Jesus replied, you, unbe you unbelieving and perverse generation, how long will I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring him here to me. So they brought the boy to him. When the spirit saw him, it immediately threw the boy into convulsions. He, f he fell to the ground and rolled around foaming at the mouth. How long has this been happening to him? Jesus asked his father. From childhood, he said. How many times has he thrown him into the fire and water and destroyed him? Because if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, If you can, everything is possible for the one who believes. And me, the father of the boy cried out, I do believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw the crowd was quickly gathered, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. Then he came out, shrieking and throwing him into terrible convulsions. The boy became like a corpse, so that many said he's dead. But Jesus, taking him by the hand, raised, raised him, and, and he stood up. And the boy was healed and given back to his father. And they were all astonished at the greatness of God. After he had gone into the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we drive it out? And he told them, because of your little faith. For truly, I tell you, if you have the faith the size of mustard seed, you'll tell this mountain to move here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. This kind can only come out by, by nothing but prayer. So sickness in the scripture is often connected to demonic activity, right? By kneeling, his father shows humility, but he lacks the faith. While the, while the disciples also lack faith, Christ rebukes the man for placing the blame on his disciples. When it was his greater lack of faith that prevented the boy's healing. In effect, Jesus defends his disciples in front of the multitudes, but later rebukes them privately, teaching us that we ought to first correct people in private. It's very interesting, right? As leaders, right, we should correct people in private, right? No, well, everything Christ did was an example, right? Other than the fact that, yes, being God, but everything Christ did was setting an example, right? On how to be a leader, right? How to lead, right? So St. John Christensen notes, this rebuke is directed at the nine disciples who could not cast out the demon. Where's the pillars of faith? Peter, James, and John, Galatians chapter 2, verse 9, were not included in the rebuke as they had been on the mountain with Christ. This kind refers to all the powers of darkness, not simply, that the, not simply those that cause a particular illness. The banishment of demons requires faith, prayer, and fasting, right? For there is no healing and no victory in spiritual warfare without all three. Beginning with a did act, the fathers, apostles have taught that both the person in need of healing and the person performing the healing must believe, pray, and fast, right? So it talked about moving, what, a mountain, right? Well, it's not recorded that, it, that an apostle literally moved a mountain. The fathers, the apostles are clear that they have this authority if they need, if they need to, to arise. Certain saints did, however, make crevices appear in the mountains. Furthermore, not everything the apostles accomplished was written down beyond the literal meaning. This promise is also an illustration of the power of faith, prayer, in all areas of our lives. Whatever we ask without hesitation of believing in God's power, we shall receive when we ask for spiritually profitable things. The blessed Theoplat said that. And that's where we'll end, right? All right, this is where we're going to end. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
O Lord God, you've spoken to us your divine saving words. You illuminate the souls of sinners and comprehend what we just read. That we don't appear simply as hear spiritual words, but doers of good deeds, true pursuers of faith, having a blameless life and conduct without reproaching Christ our Lord, and to we get glory, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever in stages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, they will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us our trespasses, forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. But yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory of the Father, and the Son, Holy Spirit, both now and forever in the stages. Amen. We depart in peace. In the name of the Lord, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Peace with you all. Go in peace. Shalom, shalom. May the Lord forgive those who love us and those who hate us. All right. Thank you all again for following. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine, up, shine upon you and be merciful to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and forever. In the ages. Amen. Hello. Oh. Jerry Wesley Campbell. Good evening, good afternoon, good day, good morning. Whenever and however these readings, these messages, reflections, studies find you. JPC Special Talk, never hold back, no excuses. Thank you all again for the love and support and the following. I hope you're learning a lot. You know, just keep on just keep on that path, right? Just build that relationship with him. Right? I love you all. I'm out.